We protect them at night and during rain to keep the soil dry. Proper handling of calves is crucial because poor management can result in temperament issues later in life, especially during milking. The calves always have access to starter concentrate with a 21% protein content. From this point forward, the calves must learn to harvest their own forage. We'll now show you the artificial rearing process here on the farm. We use a very simple, straightforward model where we manage four pens and move the calves based on their age and weight. We only rear Girolando F1 calves, focusing solely on the females. For GER cattle, we raise both males and females because the males are sold as breeding bulls, providing added genetic value. This simple system uses milbar feeders, with milk from our own cows transported using a basic vehicle, a modified motorcycle with a trailer. This setup is highly economical, easy to maintain, and reliable. The mill bar has yielded excellent results. It allows us to feed groups of calves together. We use one unit for 10 calves and another for five calves, feeding 15 calves simultaneously. The benefits are clear. Firstly, during feeding, we can quickly identify any calf showing signs of illness, such as loss of appetite or lethargy. These calves are separated, examined, their temperature is taken, and treatments are provided as needed. The mill bar nipples are firm, encouraging the calves to generate ample saliva while feeding. According to research by the system's developers, this saliva contains enzymes that improve milk digestion. Additionally, the calves feel satisfied and tired after feeding, reducing the likelihood of them sucking on each other, a behavior that can lead to infection. Our feeding plan for Girolando calves involves weaning them at around 70 to 80 days. In group rearing, we wean the entire group when the youngest calf reaches 70 days. The average weaning weight is approximately 105 kilograms. The feeding process begins with 5 liters of milk per day, increasing to 6 liters and then to 8 liters for about 15 chakui days. We focus on maximizing milk intake during the first 45 days. Afterward, the calves transition to weaning over a 10-day period with 2 liters of milk daily. We strongly encourage grain consumption. The calves always have access to starter concentrate with a 21% protein content. Since textured feeds are unavailable locally, we use pelleted feed supplemented with 5% whole corn. This adjustment has been highly beneficial. We work closely with Mario Ordonez, our nutritionist, who is also a partner in our feed production company. Using knowledge gained from Dr. Mike Hodgins' classes, we've developed this pelleted concentrate to meet our needs. The mineral product we use contains 23% calcium, 15% phosphorus, essential microminerals, and vitamins A, D, and E. This supports weight gain and immune system development, which has proven highly effective. For us, the starter concentrate is a fundamental component of the calves' diet. We continuously stimulate grain intake to ensure that by weaning at around 80 days, the calves consume at least 2 kilograms of concentrate daily. I'll show you the next groups of calves so you can see how they progress and how we manage them at each stage. It's worth noting that the calves always have access to fresh, high-quality water. This practical rearing system has been refined to deliver excellent results. All the feed used on the farm is formulated by us. We work with a partner company that manufactures our balanced feed for the starter concentrate. We receive the pellets from the factory and mix in 5% whole corn here on the farm. It's a simple process. We measure one kilogram of feed and mix it with 50 grams of whole corn before feeding. We also produce our own mineral salt tailored for the calves first stage of life. This autonomy in feed formulation and production ensures we meet the specific nutritional requirements of our calves. We organize the pens like a school. The smallest calves stay in one group 
then move to the next pin as they grow. This continues until they graduate to the larger groups. See. The feeding area is complemented by shaded resting zones where the calves can bask in the sun and relax. This collective rearing system suits our operations, particularly with gear and gear Holstein crossbreeds. Proper handling of calves is crucial because poor management can result in temperament issues later in life, especially during milking. To ensure docile animals, we implement and imprinting process. From birth, calves are separated from their mothers and handled gently with stroking and care to establish a bond of trust and affection. Studies show that such early positive interactions improve weight gain and calmness. This translates to a more relaxed and efficient milking process in the future. Girolando cattle, in particular, require careful management to avoid temperament problems making this process vital for us. And what about diseases such as diarrhea and pneumonia? Are these issues more severe for this breed? Since we work with the gear breed, which is a Zebuin breed, they are more rustic and resistant. When we cross gear with Holstein to produce F1 Girolando calves, the F1 combines the best traits of both breeds, which makes it so successful. The gear, contributes resilience and rusticity. For calf rearing, we ensure the facility is well ventilated, which helps reduce the incidence of respiratory issues. Additionally, we follow strict protocols, starting with colostrum management. We measure colostrum quality, administer it within the first four hours of life in the appropriate quantity, and verify that the calves are properly fed. During the first five days, we take a blood sample, separate the serum, and measure it with a refractometer to confirm that all colostrum management steps were correctly followed. This ensures the calves are very healthy. While proper protocols and care are essential, we've managed to standardize our rearing process effectively. Issues like diarrhea are minimal, although we've encountered some cases. Through fecal tests, we identified Cryptosporidium parvum as a concern. To address this, we use a specific product during the first seven days of life to prevent the issue. As you can see, these animals are well handled, healthy, and very docile. We've implemented a system inspired by local coffee plantations, a retractable roof. At night and during rain, we close the roof to keep the ground dry. When the sun is out and there's no rain forecast, we open the roof to let the soil dry, reducing bacterial growth and related issues. This system works very well. The roof slides on rails, allowing us to open and close it as needed. As I mentioned earlier, our rearing process aims to minimize stress at every stage. For example, during weaning, when the calves stop receiving milk, we keep them in the same facility without changing their environment or companions. The concentrate remains the same. The only addition is the provision of hay starting at 60 days of age. By maintaining the calves in the same location with the same group, we make the transition as smooth as possible. After weaning, we leave the calves in their current pen for at least 20 days to minimize stress. Once this period is over, they are moved to the next stage, which we call the transition group. This group consists of fully weaned calves that no longer receive milk. In this stage, we provide them with three kilograms of grain daily, and they begin grazing for their forage. Behind us, you can see the small grazing rotations. Each plot is 500 square meters. These pastures are well managed, harvested at the optimal stage, and fertilized. From this point forward, the calves must learn to harvest their own forage. This phase is essential for adapting them to the grazing base system we use. While still receiving three kilograms of grain supplementation, this stage is critical in transitioning them into fully grazing animals. 
This is how we manage our rearing process, making gradual changes at each stage to reduce stress while aligning the calves with our grazing model. We also raise purebred gear males as these bulls are sold as breeding animals to other farms. They hold significant market value. These bulls are part of a genetic improvement program known as Seven Colors in Brazil or Tatu Com Cobra. In other regions, this may have different names, but it generally refers to mixed breed cows that lack a defined lineage, unlike Girolandos, which are specific gear Holstein crosses. In Colombia, there is still a large population of dairy producers who work with mixed breed cattle. When these producers introduce gear lechero bulls, such as the ones we offer, they achieve notable genetic improvement in their herds. This is why we raise a significant number of gear bulls for sale as breeding animals, which is another key aspect of our genetics business.